the Premier League has seen its fair share of betrayals over the years. Ashley Cole to Chelsea, Tevez to Man City, Van Persie to United and so on and so forth. But none of these come close to what Saul Campbell did in 2001. Saul Campbell started his youth career at West Ham. However, by the age of 15, he switched from East to North London joining the Tottenham Academy. He rose through the ranks and made his debut for Tottenham on December 5, 1992 against Chelsea, where he scored the only goal for Spurs as they lost 2-1. Over the following years, Campbell developed into an elite defender, to the point where he would be considered to be one of the best in the country, if not the absolute best. And by 1997, he was made captain of Tottenham. And it didn't take him long to lead them to glory, as he lifted the League Cup trophy as Spurs beat Leicester City in the 1999 final. This made him the first black captain to lift a major trophy at Wembley. But despite their success in the League Cup, Tottenham's form in the league had been atrocious over the years. Their highest place finish since Campbell made his debut in 1992 was seventh, so European football was a rarity at White Hart Lane. But the League Cup victory gave them the chance to participate in the 1999-2000 UEFA Cup. However, Spurs were eliminated in the second round. While Tottenham were effectively a mid-table team, they still had the best defender in the country. As such, the hierarchy were worried that the top teams from around Europe would snap up their captain. So, they started working on extending his contract which would end in summer 2001. But Campbell wasn't keen on signing the contract extension on the table, as he had reservations regarding the club's ambition. And he did have a point, since making his debut in 1992, he had seen managers come and go routinely, highlighting the club's lack of stability. And in the summer of 2000, Manchester United and Leeds United both offered £18 million for the defender. However, the club rejected the offers as they were confident that he would eventually sign the extension. So Campbell went into the final year of his contract with no signs of agreement. While the Bosma ruling was still a new concept in England, Tottenham's chairman Alan Sugar suspected that Saul Campbell planned on running down his contract in order to leave for free at the end of the season. Not long ago, Steve McManaman had done the same thing, signing a contract with Real Madrid after running down his contract. So the chairman's suspicions were not unjustified. During the 2000-2001 season, Campbell was routinely questioned regarding his future and it seemed like Spurs fans finally got the answer they were looking for, as Campbell announced that he would stay in a post-match interview in January of 2001. What about your situation, Sol? Will you be staying at Tottenham? I'm staying. But still, there weren't any updates regarding his contract situation. And now that he was in the final six months of his contract, foreign clubs could negotiate pre-agreement with him as per the Bosman ruling, while local clubs had to wait until his contract was over. And everyone expected that he would move abroad anyways. As such, Bayern Munich, Real Madrid, Barcelona and Internationale all made contact with his camp in order to snap up the best defender in England. Bayern and Madrid wanted quick responses, but Campbell's camp refused to do that until they had sorted out everything with Tottenham. So, Bayern and Madrid pulled out of the race but Barca and Inter were willing to wait it out. Campbell had been sidelined for much of that season, but he was able to return for Tottenham's FA Cup semi-final tie against their fiercest rivals, Arsenal. However, Campbell left the game after suffering an injury, as Arsenal beat Spurs and qualified for the FA Cup final. That became Campbell's final appearance of the campaign, as he was ruled out until the end of the season. Meanwhile, behind the scenes, the Spurs hierarchy were still hopeful that they could convince him to stay, offering him their most lucrative contract in their history in addition to several bonuses. But in the end, everyone conceded that his mind was made up and that they would lose their captain for free. And on May 27, 2001, Tottenham released a statement confirming the departure of Saul Campbell, after which the player followed this up with his own statement. 
This has been the hardest decision of my football career. My decision has been based purely on football. I'll be 27 in September and need to be playing in the major European club competitions sooner rather than later. I've been at Spurs for 10 years and my commitment to the club during that time is there for all to see. My decision has been a prolonged one. This is because I wanted to give the club every opportunity to have input into my future. Following this, Campbell held several meetings with Inter and Barca weighing up its options. While the exact numbers were not published, it was reported that Barcelona had offered him an eye-watering contract rumored to be close to £200,000, a sum that is respectable even by today's standard. On the other hand, after giving him the tour of Giuseppe Miazza and Inter's various facilities, Inter's president Massimo Moratti confidently claimed that Campbell will be an Inter player, so everyone was keen to see where Campbell would eventually end up. Meanwhile, in North London, Tottenham's bitter rivals Arsenal had called a press conference, and since they had recently agreed a deal for Richard Wright, a substitute goalkeeper for David Seaman, many journalists were not interested in coming down for that. But those who came got the shock of their lives when they realized it was not Richard Wright that walked in behind Arsene Wenger into the conference room, but rather the experts captain Saul Campbell himself. No one could believe what they were seeing. It was unfathomable to think Saul Campbell would leave Spurs on free and then join their arch rivals Arsenal. But that was what happened. Campbell went on to explain why he joined Arsenal. It is a fantastic club. My decision was on football, totally. A great team manager, the setup is geared up to win. I want to be here and I am here now. I'm ambitious, I want to play football, I dream about playing at the top level. This is why I'm here. And he had a point. While Spurs were languishing in mediocrity, their bitter rivals were building something special under the leadership of Arsene Wenger. They had won the Premier League title in 1998 and were the only team that could potentially challenge the dominant force that was Manchester United. While everyone expected Campbell to go to one of Barca or enter, Arsenal's vice chairman David Dean set up a meeting with Saul Campbell. Campbell was so scared of getting seen with the representatives of Arsenal that he opted to meet after midnight. That is how bad the hatred between Arsenal and Tottenham was, and still is. And after a few meetings, David Dean and Arsene Wenger were confident that they had found the perfect replacement for their captain Tony Adams, who was near the end of his career. When the news of Campbell's move to Arsenal broke, it would be an understatement to say that Spurs fans felt betrayed. They were livid, and they would show him their true feelings when he returned to White Hart Lane in the following season, this time as an Arsenal player. Spurs fans had thousands of balloons and t-shirts with the word Judas while is calling him every name under the sun, even throwing plastic bottles at him reminding him how much this betrayal hurt them. But despite this, Campbell had a successful debut season at Arsenal where he won the domestic double. He then became the core part of the Arsenal team of 2003-2004 that went on to win the league without losing a single game. He was undoubtedly one of the best defenders of his generation. Campbell is only one of three central defenders to make over 500 appearances in the Premier League. And it's no surprise that he's one of the candidates for this year's Premier League Hall of Fame. He left Spurs to win the big trophies, and he definitely did. But his relationship with the Spurs faithful is broken beyond repair, and they still haven't forgiven him decades later. But if you thought Campbell's betrayal was bad, check out this next video which showcases an even worse betrayal.